Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Bench Warriors Sports Podcast. I'm Rafi, as always. Today I wanted to take some time and talk about five teams that I think have improved so far this offseason. So what I'm counting as this is just since the start of the offseason to now, based upon trades, based upon free agency signings, which teams do I think have done the best so far. I'll make another video as well in the coming days where I talk about five teams that I think took a step back in comparison to the team that they took into this offseason. So let me know what you guys think about this five and then the five that I talked about in my additional video. Be sure to like this video. Please subscribe as well. We're trying to hit 100 subscribers by the end of the year. So by you subscribing, it helps our channel out and we hope that we continue to provide quality content for you all. So let's get into the first team, the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, the Chicago Blackhawks are a team, obviously there is some bias with me being a Blackhawks fan, but the Blackhawks did get better this offseason in comparison to the team that they had entering this offseason. Now, obviously, Connor Bernard is certainly going to help that as we saw what happened with the Oilers and the Maple Leafs when they got Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid, respectively. Bernard is a generational player. He instantly makes the Blackhawks better and a better team than they were this past season. And still, even with some of the additions they made versus who they lost, they lost Caleb Jones, they lost Jonathan Tays who might not even play in the NHL again. That's certainly a possibility that he might retire. And you look at who else the Blackhawks have brought in. Corey Perry, Taylor Hall is probably the biggest addition that they brought in, aside from Connor Bedard. He's going to slide in really well alongside Connor Bedard, likely on that first line. Then you also have other players like Nick Foligno, Ryan Donato. Ryan Donato is a very solid, flexible player who can play center. He can play either side of the wing, left wing, right wing, and he can play anywhere in your lineup too. Very versatile player. So the Blackhawks to bring in some veteran leadership and to bring some other guys who can play in the top six, it gives Luke Richardson a variety of different options. And I think the Blackhawks are going to be much improved. Luke Richardson did a great job this past season with a lot of AHL quality players. So I'm really looking forward to how he matches up against other teams or uses his players to match up against other teams with players who are actually high quality NHL players and are much better than this past season so far. Now, the next team I want to talk about is the Dallas Stars. Now, it's very hard to get much better than going all the way to the conference final. Now, we can talk about how the Dallas Stars got eliminated, how that wasn't a great look. Yes, they did lose Max Domi, but I think just by adding a guy like Matt Duchesne, arguably is a better move for them. Same price, $3 million going out with Max Domi, $3 million coming in with Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne is a solid 67 point player, and although he wasn't as great as his contract was in Nashville, I still think that he's going to have a bounce back year with the Dallas Stars. He's going to probably play alongside Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan in that top six. Obviously, you have the hints, Robertson, along with Pavelski line, and that line is obviously going to be their go-to line generating all their offense, but Matt Duchesne is still going to provide great offense throughout their lineup. Also bringing a guy like Craig Smith and a young player in Sam Steele. Sam Steele low-key almost had 30 points this past season, so be on the lookout for him potentially to do really well with this team. They're likely going to have Stan Coven. They're likely going to have Maverick Bork also in their lineup, so the Dallas Stars are certainly a team that I expect to potentially even win the Stanley Cup this upcoming season just because of the moves they've made so far this offseason. The next thing I want to talk about is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, a lot of people, including myself, are very skeptical about the moves that the Columbus Blue Jackets made. But at the end of the day, they did take their team, which was just got blasted by injuries this past year, and they did make improvements. So they are one of the more improved teams that I see, at least, and that's why I want to talk about them in this video. Adding Ivan Provorov, for example, adding Damon Severson, they really overhauled that blue line. Zach Runsky is an addition, but the fact that he's going to be healthy, ready to go in October, that's going to be a big Big addition for the Columbus Blue Jackets, even though he's already been on the team for them. Obviously, also, you didn't get Connor Bedard, but getting a guy like Adam Fantilli, who many, including myself, are drawing comparisons to Jack Eichel right when he was drafted right after Connor McDavid. Adam Fantilli is a great consolation prize. He's likely going to be playing in their top six, potentially on the third line, but I see him in all likelihood getting top six minutes this upcoming season, maybe even slotting alongside Ken Johnson and gotten Johnny Goudreau. We'll see what happens, obviously. But the Blue Jackets, even with Tortorella being gone a while ago, and now you're bringing Mike Babcock, I don't know how much of a great move that is. You're kind of making a lateral move as a whole there. But at the end of the day, the Blue Jackets still made some moves. They still, I think, got better. It's just a matter of how much better they get and if they're going to be a playoff contender come March and then into April. Like the Blackhawks and the Dallas Stars, the Colorado Avalanche are another team from the Central Division that I think is one of the more improved teams this past offseason, 
over the course of the offseason. That being, obviously, you can also look at the Arizona Coyotes as another team that I will not be talking about. But adding Logan Cooley, adding some other pieces, I think the Coyotes are certainly going to be better as well. Central Division certainly looks to be trending in the right direction. Not many teams look are looking like they're taking a step back, aside from the Winnipeg Jets, which I'll probably get into in my upcoming video about some of the teams that I think are taking a step back since the offseason began. Colorado Avalanche did lose some big pieces like Evan Rodrigue, JT Comfer. They're still going to be without Gabriel Landeskog, unfortunately. For the entire season as he's still recovering from an injury that kept him out for all of this past season as well so there are certainly some key losses and key departures alex newbook once again was supposed to take that leap and be that second line center he unfortunately wasn't able to really take advantage of that opening there and did get traded to the montreal canadians in a trade that i think worked out for both sides quite well alex newbook certainly can become a top six center in the nhl but for the colorado avalanche we're looking to win now there's a good reason for why they made that trade. Now, the players that they brought in, when you bring in a guy like Ross Colton, you bring in a guy like Ryan Johansson, you have two players that I believe can play second line center, play third line center, and that really rebuilds the Colorado Avalanche, which is center depth. I think now that they have a very good rotation of four centers who can really play well in their lineup throughout their lineup. So it'll certainly be interesting to see. I think either Ross Colton or Ryan Johansson can play that role of second line center. So it'll be interesting to see who is given that opportunity first and if they can take it and run with it or if the other player is able to take advantage and jump right into that spot instead. Now, another key addition that I think should not go under the wayside is Jonathan Druin. Druin has had a very up and down career, started really well with the Lightning, started well with the Montreal Canadiens, but has really fallen off of late, is given kind of a last chance opportunity here with the Colorado Avalanche, and he will be reunited in all I could with his good pal from juniors from Halifax. Nathan McKinnon, I think this is going to be a big move for Jonathan Druin, reunited with Nathan McKinnon. So I'm expecting a breakout season for Jonathan Druin. And I really think that the Colorado Avalanche are going to cement themselves once again as one of the true cup favorites come this upcoming season. The final team I want to talk about is the Detroit Red Wings to round up this video. Now, the Red Wings are one of those teams that is really eyeing that wild card spot in the Eastern Conference, there seems like the Bruins, who we don't know how far, they're going to fall off with the losses of Bergeron and likely Krejci, and then you get into Bertuzzi and the other pieces they lost. You're also looking at the Islanders, too, who haven't really made themselves better. They might not be able to hold on to that wild card spot. So that spot's really open and ready for the taking for the Detroit Red Wings. I think Steve Eisman is continuing the Iser plan, and he's really trying to put the Red Wings in a position to take a hold of that wild card spot. They beefed up the defense. I know Shane Goss, Bear, and Justin Hall aren't flashy signings. I still think that they better the bottom pairings of their defense and really rounds out with an offensive player in Goss, Bear, and Justin Hall, who got a bad rap in Toronto. I still think that he's a solid third pairing defenseman. You can make the argument all you want that they already have Chirot and other guys who could play that bottom pair role, but I think Justin Hall is still a solid in NHL defenseman as a whole. You only lose Philip Zadina, and that was because things weren't working out for them. He wasn't really providing much value to the team regardless in their lineup. And then you also lose Dominic Kubelik, who is a guy who could put in 30 goals, but if his one-timer is not hitting, he's not really doing anything else. He's just a guy, as I've seen him plenty of times, as a member of the Chicago Blackhawks. And he was traded too at the end of the day for Alex Brinkett, which is certainly an upgrade. You go from a guy who, if he's not scoring, does nothing else, to Alex Brinkett, who can get into those corners. He's a gritty player as well. He can put in 40-plus goals. I wouldn't be shocked if he hits 51 here. You put him alongside Dylan Larkin, who we all know super fast, and Lucas Raymond as well, another player who might just keep taking those next steps and developing into an elite first-line player. And then, obviously, you round up the rest of that lineup too by bringing in a guy like J.D. Comfort. I really do like where the Red Wings and how they're trending. I think they're trending upwards, absolutely. And I would not be shocked if the Detroit Red Wings are able to sneak into the wild card with just some of the additions that they made. They certainly got better than this past season, and it's certainly much. So let me know what you guys think about the five teams I talked about today. Do you guys think that they improved? Are there other teams that you believe have improved more than them? Please let me know in the comments below. Once again, be sure to like this video. Please subscribe as well. We really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys again soon. See ya.